everybody, Noel from Scratch Genius here. Today I will be showing you how to do part 2 on making the Google Snake game in Scratch. I hope you will enjoy this video and let's get into it. Today we are going to be doing collisions and the game over. So here we are in a project as we left it off last time. If you did not watch part 1, I would highly recommend you do. To get started, let's go over to the renderer and create a new block which is going to be for detecting the collisions. I'm going to call this collision detection. Okay, and make sure you select run without screen refresh. It is very important. Click OK. And now that we have the block, let's go and drag it into the repeat loop. So every segment of the tail it draws, it's going to detect if it's colliding with the player. So how this is going to work is that we're going to use the python algorithm theorem to figure out the distance in between the renderer, in this example, the circle over here, and the player. And since the python algorithm theorem is for triangles, we can actually kind of convert this situation into sort of a triangle problem. So as you can see here, here is the difference in y position and the difference in x position, which we can call the side A, side B, and this is going to be side B, or the distance that we're trying to figure out. So as the Python Aguirre theorem states, for all right angles triangles, d squared equals a squared plus b squared. So obviously to find out d, we need to know what a and b are. So a and b, as I said before, there were a difference in y and difference in x. They're going to be delta y and delta x, because delta means difference or change in something. So to figure out the delta, the delta y equals the renderer y, which is 50, minus the player y, which is 10. Or in this case, we can also reverse it the other way around, and at the end it wouldn't really make a difference. Player y, which is 10, minus renderer y, so that would be minus 40. And the same thing for the x. So we are nearly finished, except that there is one small problem. If we do this, we will get d squared, not just d alone. So to solve that, it's very simple. We just have to square root the whole equation, and then we'll get d on its own. Great, I hope you understood that. Now that we have that out of the way, let's go and start making it in Scratch. So first of all, let's drag in an if block and a less than operator. This is going to be for checking if the distance to the player is less than a specific radius. I'm going to make that something like 10. Now let's start making the distance calculation. I'm going to start off by dragging in this, which we can switch to square root, and then drag in an addition. Now to find the deltas, we'll drag in two subtractions. Now let's drag in the x position and y position. And the x position of player and y position of player. We can use this thing over here and we can select player and this will set the x position, y position, direction and so on. We can do the same thing but for the y. Great! Now that we have those, we can duplicate them. So now we have all the deltas we will need. Let's go and drag in a uh, multiplication so we can get the square root of the delta x which is this over here and the square root of delta y now let's simply drag them into the addition and we're finished we can drag it in over here so if the distance to the player is less than 10, then we want to do something. What we want to do is that we can go to events and drag in the broadcast message and we can set this to a new message, something like game over. Hit OK and good. Now that we have that, we can go over and paint a new sprite. This is going to be our message that pops up when we lose, so we can call this game over.
and we can make it have some text that says the game over. Good. We definitely have to make it a little bit bigger and center it. We can now go and give it some script. So let's go to code. And when the green flag is clicked, then we're going to hide it. You can also drag in the when I receive game over. So when the green flag is clicked, we hide it. When it receives game over, we show it. You can also make it go to the center. Good. If we go to test this out, well then you'll see that immediately we lose. Now, the reason for this is that because when the renderer is drawing the beginning of the tail, it's super close to the player. So it's going to detect the collision when it's drawing the beginning of the tail. And we don't want that. So to fix that, we can go into renderer and then if the next position is greater than something like 10, so if the position it is drawing is something greater than 10, well then it is going to detect the collision. If it is less than 10, it's not going to detect the collision because we are very close to the player, so close that we're most likely going to trigger it. So now that we have this and we run it, it should work. And if we crash into their body, we lose. Now to make it so that we lose when we hit the edge, let's go over into player and then we can drag in an if. If we're touching the edge, well then we will also broadcast game over. Now one last thing that we could do before we end this video is go ahead and make a restart button. To do that, you can go and paint your own sprite, although I am going to go and upload my own. Now that we have our restart button, we can go and when the green flag is clicked, you can also drag in uh, when I receive game over. So when the green flag is clicked, it is going to hide. When it receives game over, it is going to show. Now we can actually drag in one more and this is going to be when the sprite is clicked. Now when the sprite is clicked, we can send something like uh, restart or start. So we can drag in the broadcast and make a new message called start. And with that, to actually make it restart, we can go and replace all of the other green, green flagged click blocks with when I receive start. So I went ahead and I set them all to start instead of when green flagged click. And we can go to the stage and simply when the green flag is clicked, broadcast start. Now before testing, let's go to player and make it so that it goes to the center when it receives start, zero, zero. And let's also go to the restart. I'm just gonna make it so that when it shows, it's gonna go a little bit lower. Good. So now if we go test it, when I die, well then we can click restart and we restart. Yay! Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay tuned for part three. Also, if you like this video, please hit like. If you have ideas or suggestions for future videos, please post them in the comment section below. Have fun, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video.